The end of the year is my favorite time to watch YouTube videos because I am a sucker for sporting season recaps, greatest moments of 2024, top 10 films to come out, and my favorite content creators reflecting on their previous 12 months. Have I earned the right to have my own 2024 reflection video? Absolutely not, but I'm gonna do it anyway. You can't stop me, you're not even my real dad. You can call the cops, I don't give a friends. Today I'm going to answer some of your burning questions and together we're going to have a look at some of the highs the channel had in 2024 and we're going to laugh at a whole bunch of the lows. Then I'll take a look at 2025 and what's to come. Now, let's cue the intro. Now this video could blow out time-wise, so if I'm half as talented as I think I am, my goal is to bring the total runtime in at around 21 minutes I'll start by bringing you up to speed on the channel overall. The channel has been up and running now on YouTube for two and a half years, and at the time of filming, we have ticked over around 22,000 subscribers, and there's a little over 60 long format videos. Building a community of regular viewers is a huge challenge for a new channel, but I was very fortunate that within the first year, we had ticked over all of the metrics and requirements to be approved in the YouTube Partner Program which basically means that YouTube will monetize the videos, but more importantly, they are making money off me, so then they put more effort into recommending my videos. So the first year we grew to around 1,000 subscribers, and then over the next year or year and a half, you can see what we've come to. So that gives you an idea of just how lucky we've been with the channel's growth. And did I think that it was going to take off like this? Absolutely not. There was a ceiling goal of 1,000 subscribers that we thought if we could achieve it would blow our minds, but to exceed that to the extent that we have, my mates and I are so wrapped. All right, my mates. Flashing Badger Painting isn't just me, I have a handful of mates that contribute their time and their energy as well, and they're very patient with me. We have Dingles, who has appeared on camera once during the 3D painting video, and he is the man behind creating the amazing thumbnails that the channel has that I look for any excuse to showcase. Fun fact, Dingles also edited the first four videos that were put up on the channel, but we swiftly discovered that editing videos for a dude with zero subscribers has no sex appeal. And whilst we're on the subject of sex appeal, the cushion up behind me that changes in every single video that we have is a Photoshop picture of Dingles over the top of Giga Chad. And he's gifted it to me for the sole reason to make my jawline the second most impressive on the channel. Time for our first Discord question, as Apothecary Stan Mame has asked, why a badger? A good question that comes with a pretty dull answer. My gaming tag online is Badger and Gordon's is Flash. So when we were combining forces around 10 years ago because we wanted to make a board game, we created Flashing Badger. I loved it so much that I decided to keep it for the channel. So Gordon. Gordon not only features in the playthrough board game videos, but he is also the one behind crafting the rich stories and narratives for things like our Judge Dread diorama. That diorama video also features our amazing voice acting. Well, thank God, I seen one of them soul agents clambering around the old shack down there, and he's got some droids with him. Anyway, oh, and Gordon also created the backstory for my custom Blood Angels task force. I want to dive into some of my favorite moments on the channel over the last couple of years, but surely it needs to be a tier list. That's what content creators do. Now I have a whole bunch that come to mind straight away, so let's get stuck into it. Constantine Valdor. Oh my, okay, what a place to start. I was only around 12 or so videos into the channel at this point with very little following, but one evening I had some liquid courage and I sent emails out to some of the big wigs in the hobby. None of them replied, obviously, except for one, Josh from Mini Wargaming. And that meant that we got to team up, he was the nicest dude, and it ended with a collaboration where I painted up Constantine Valdor for him, which now features in their bat reps on their channel. Oh, it's so close. So coming out of the gate strong, that's S tier, obviously. The Wargamer Games. This is where the army painter hosted a painting competition. And what was special for it with me is that all the other entrants in there were channels that I followed and people that I learned painting from. So whilst I didn't belong in that world, it was really cool to share that moment with them. 
Oh, and this is where we were introduced to Coach Macho Man Mike. Sorry again about him. But, Wargamer Games, that was really cool. Let's go ahead and pop that in S tier for now. Next up is the Formula One style Orc Buggy. This is probably my favourite video, and it's criminally underrated if you ask me. Anyway, this was an opportunity for me to mush together some of my favourite hobbies, being Formula One and painting models, when I created this McLaren Daniel Ricard Orc goth livery style Formula One car. The lofty goal that I had was that somehow someone would reach out to Danny Rick and show him the video, which never happened. But Someone who did work at McLaren reached out to me on social media and let me know that he and a few buddies from work are Warhammer fans and they got a kick out of the video. Where should that go? Probably S tier if I'm being honest. Next up is Tiny's Night. The backstory here is that after about a year or so, some amazing followers of the channel decided that we needed somewhere more social to hang out, so we created the Discord community. <gasps> yes, it's free to join, click the link and come say hi. In the Discord is Tiny. He's a lovely dude that does a lot of work for the New Zealand Warhammer community and fundraisers for charity. I'm not from New Zealand, so obviously we are enemies. But because he's so awesome, I decided that I wanted to surprise him by painting a model and I set about on the biggest challenge the channel had had so far. Tiny getting his Chaos Knight. Loved it and good timing because we need something up here in S tier. Ah, the Stegodon, last one. Underrated video again. I blended the incredible single season TV show of Dino Riders with Age of Sigma and 40K as I push kicked them into a blender to create this orc beast truck conversion diorama. So say what you want, that right there, S tier. A pretty decent balance of results there. But now I think it's time for some more of your Discord questions. William Martin says, how big of a head does this guy have? He runs a YouTube channel, a Discord, a family, has a big boy job, and still needs an entire channel dedicated to FAQs about himself. Get a load, guys. And that's even before we get into the multiple personalities dedicated to cheering himself on. Interesting take, William, and you're right. I am funny and handsome. Tiny, the man himself, asks, what is your favorite flavor of Tim Tam and what's your opinion on Bundaberg? Tim Tam, easy, double coated chocolate. Get out of here with this mess. Why are you wasting my time? And my opinion on Bundaberg, the town in Queensland, it does nothing for me. The rum made in the town in Queensland also does nothing for me. The ginger beer in the little brown bottles, Hook it to my veins, that is the nectar of the gods. And I find that it pairs really well with success. Whoever makes Bundaberg, if you are watching this, please sponsor me. Frank, better known as Blacksword asks, YouTube is a beast of a platform with so many influencers, artists, and characters. What advice would you give to someone who wants to start their own YouTube channel? And what is some of the biggest lessons you've learned since beginning your channel? Wow, all right, I've got to be serious again. I could make a whole video on this. In fact, I could make a whole series on it. And if you're interested, let me know because I totally do that for you guys. But for people that are looking to start their own channel or have recently started one, there are a few ideas that come to mind that I can share with you. I think first up, ask yourself, what is it that you're hoping to get out of having a YouTube channel? Once you know that, you can set some minor goals and stay focused on them to achieve the bigger picture. It might be that you want somewhere to showcase your painting. You might love teaching and painting's your hobby and so that's a great avenue for it. You might want to build a little community or you might want to get mega rich on that lucrative action dolly market. If you're motivated by money, I strongly recommend that you do a whole bunch of research first. Everyone is different, but I can let you know that I'm firmly in the red. I invest a lot more into the channel than I get back in return, but that's okay because money wasn't the goal for having this channel. It was about having fun. One of my goals for 2025 will be to try and balance that a bit more, especially if I'm sending models around the world to people. And I'll have to think of some ways to do that. <coughs> Patreon, 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 link below, Patreon. Damn, allergies. And most importantly, and finally, have fun. You've probably got into having a channel about the hobby because you're enjoying the hobby so much. 
So don't let stress from the channel start to make this work for you. I allow myself to miss a video deadline so that I can keep my commitments with my family. Uh, and of course, make sure you laugh along the way at all the misfortunes that happen with your channel. Gordon Dingles and I regularly send each other screenshots of the most brutal comments that get left on these videos, and also when I botch a paint job, or when a video just bombs. Oh my god, speaking of videos that bombed, did you know that the worst performing video on this channel is a Q&A style video just like this one? It absolutely tanked. Dingles thinks it's the funniest thing ever, and he regularly brings it up. Down in the comments, it was basically people telling me just to shut up and paint. Apothecary Stan Man Me, I reckon, leaves a comment on about every second 40k related video that I do, posing the question, why haven't you painted a salamander? The reason is, I figured it would only get one view, and if you happen to miss that week, I'd get zero views. But I want you to know that over the last year, you have broken me. You have whittled me down and you've gotten your way because I'm currently putting together a salamanders video. Now it's been brought to my attention that there are many variations of Mike that have appeared on the channel over the last couple of years. And we are going to fast fire and have a look at a handful of them. It's a tier list of sorts, but I'll do them in descending orders of greatness, starting with the S tier finalists. Classic Mike. Mike with a beard. Mike with a huge beard. Mike with huge hair? What even is that? Syndrome? Corporate Mike. Sci-fi mystery host Mike. Macho man Mike. Bat Mike. Horace Lupica. Can we trust him? There were no other tiers. They were all S tier. But I feel like you knew that was coming. More Discord questions. CFT sets you up beautifully for my origin story by asking, can you talk about your painting journey? What got you into painting mini specifically? How long have you been at it? Did you have any artistic experience beforehand? When did you settle on your favorite setup? What made you decide to bless YouTube with your jawline? How do you keep your wife from divorcing you? Will you have a beard in the next video? First up, that's cheating. That's like 15 questions, but let me see what I can do. Painting journey and what got me into painting minis? Well, I've always been a dork and I have a massive love of board games. When I was an early teenager, I painted and played Warhammer, but it wasn't until about five or six years ago that I got back into the hobby of painting minis. How I got back into it is actually kind of a sad story and I don't want to bring the mood down. So instead, I chat about this during a podcast with Battleforge Gaming where they were amazing and invited me on. I'll add a link to their podcast below so that you can check it out if you're interested. Artistic experience or skills before this? No, obviously not. I still don't have any now. What made me want to jump onto YouTube? Hmm. Well, the Instagram account was first and I was painting photos of my completed models up there and I found that some people following me were asking for recipes and guides on how I painted them. I found it hard to describe, so I thought I'd just make a few videos instead. But then I got carried away. <laughs> how do I keep my wife from divorcing me? I love that. And it's a good question because my wife has zero interest in this hobby and frankly, she finds it pretty embarrassing but she knows how important it is to me to be able to have this as a way of unwinding from work. But in terms of keeping her around, I make sure that her and the boys remain priority number one. And I also do the ironing and a whole bunch of very average lovemaking. Did I mention I do the ironing? And you've asked if I'll have a beard in the next video. Mate, I'll do you one better. I'll give you a beard right now. There we go just because you requested it. Final or asks, what motivates me to paint for long periods of time? The answer is nothing. I'm not one of those people that can really just sit down and paint for long batches at any given time. For me, I'm either one week of painting or one week of editing, thanks to the videos. So in my week of painting, I'll be happy if I can get one or two hours of painting time per night, maybe after work when the kids go to bed. But other than that, if I have a day off and I might get six hours of painting in, it's never in one big patch. I'll do an hour or so here and then go to the gym and then do another hour, then a bunch of chores and then come back to it. I just can't sit for long periods of time and paint continuously. When I do get into the groove though, I find myself watching YouTube TV shows or a movie in the background. 
Prince of Crows Austin asks, Mike, do you watch anime? And also, what is your favorite VIP commission so far? I don't watch anime, I'm sorry, but I do love cartoons. Classic Simpsons, Futurama, Harvey Birdman, Venture Brothers, they are some ones that come to mind off the top of my head. And my favorite VIP commissions so far. I don't wanna give you that, uh, they're all my favorite answer, but I'm not too sure. It might be the first one, the one where I paint Arjax Terminator Captain. I think what made that so special for me was that I got to use a whole bunch of custom bits and then paint it in his own personal army scheme so that it made it unique and special for him. Good timing. Sorry, Death Watch. I feel partially responsible. Here we go. William Martin coming in with, I know everyone asks where is Mike, but I wanted to ask how is Mike? Well, frankly, William Martin, that's none of your business. We have time for some more, surely. Mosasaurus asks, what model are you most afraid to paint in the unfortunate event one of us selects it? No, I'm not taking notes. All right, so some context around that one for anyone who doesn't know. In our Discord, we have a painting commission series, a friendly competition, where essentially the winner is chosen at random and they get to pick out a model and I will build it, paint it, and post it across the world to them as their prize. So, what would intimidate me the most, or what am I most afraid of? Anything Forge World. I am garbage with that resin, so I don't like that. Uh, what else? Maybe some of the Age of Sigmar models, the great big beasts and things, they look amazing when they're painted by the GW team, and I think I might struggle. I'm excited, but not afraid. Someone pick one of them. Up next, Farm Ace. But I know you're French, so maybe that's pronounced for more. Anyway, you've asked, will we see some narrative battle reports on the channel someday? I mean, you created a stunningly cool Blood Angel army, asked us for some ideas for names. It will be cool to see them in action. You're right. They are stunning. And yes, that's the plan. I'd like to add a few more units in so that the army makes a little more narrative sense. And then I'm going to try and lure Gordon over for some games. So expect to see these next year in 2025. The final segment in today's sit and talk and arguably the most important. What changes are going to be made to the channel in 2025? With over 60 videos now under my belt, that's a whole bunch of data that I can analyze to see what's working, what's tanking, and also importantly factor in what sort of videos I'm enjoying making. My favorite videos to make are anything where I get to design and kit bash a model, and also the VIP painting commission series where I paint models for you guys. That allows me to be creative and also try out different painting techniques that I'm otherwise not comfortable with. But these videos don't perform well. I mean, we have fun and I have fun, but they're not attracting new viewers. And it makes sense. No one's jumping onto YouTube and typing into the search bar, how do I convert a gene stealer rock grinder truck to be towing a huge pill bug out of an ice cave? but they are searching for things like how to paint blood angels. And that specific guide with its 65,000 views compared to the pill bug with his humble 2000 views really goes some way to highlighting that. So I think that 2025 should be a balance between what is straight up fun videos to make versus an evergreen style video that will be popular for a long time that can help be a gateway for people to discover us. So for every four videos, I think we could roughly expect to see a pattern where like number one is a painting guide to help the search algorithm gods. Number two is the VIP painting commission because I want to keep that series going. Number three is the Blood Angels army journey and I'll keep expanding on that. And the fourth can be where I get creative and have fun with dioramas and kit bash models where I really let my hair down. Now I should clarify, I enjoy making all of those types of videos and the personality of myself and the channel will still be embedded in each of them, but Corporate Mike wants me to still try and attract some new viewers. Streaming, yes. That was probably my one hobby goal of this year that I didn't achieve. The plan was to be able to sit down and hang out with you guys once a month, but I just didn't have time. My time management is elite, so if I didn't have time for that, I promise I had maxed out all my hobby time. And another reason is that a lot of the models that I've been painting this year have been surprises for people. So if I was to include them on a painting stream, I would start to let the cat out of the bag. 
but the goal remains for 2025 of hanging out with you guys once a month in a stream. Oh, and I'm trying my best to sow the seed in Gordon's mind that we should start a cheeky little podcast where we can talk about our hobby journey, include his amazing narratives, and also we've been doing a fortnightly RPG session with my mates, and I reckon that'd be pretty entertaining to capture as well. I'm doing my bit, maybe you can help me by leaving a comment below encouraging him, and we might just be able to push him over the line. If you've made it this far into the video, there's a strong chance that the channel means something special to you. And I'd love to know what it is. Leave me a comment down below of what things that you'd like to stay the same in 2025, and importantly, what things you're hoping will change. These amazing people are the channel patrons that support me financially, and with their forces combined, I can do these extra things like paying for postage to send surprise gifts around the world to people. And for you watching, know that there is zero pressure for you to contribute financially to a channel like this. Have comfort in the knowledge that with or without your hard-earned cash, I'll continue to make these videos and they'll never get hidden behind a paywall. And for those of you that are in a position and you're just itching for an opportunity to further support the channel, then I'll add a link below to our channel Patreon. In there, you'll find a couple of different tier levels, but everything unlocks regardless and you can pay as little as $1 a month and it's all yours. In the Patreon, you'll get behind the scenes access and some sneak peeks so that you can see what's coming up next on the channel. Anyway, I've been Mike, you've been amazing, and I should probably get started on next week's video. <laughs> no, I'll start again. Yeah. <laughs> get it out of our system. Goosey <laughs> goosey. <laughs>